Tonight, a special guest, Robert Lee, as he talks about Harry Simmons, the city of Castries, and his latest publication, City Remembrances. This evening, our guest in studio is author John Robert Lee, a writer, broadcaster, teacher, Bible preacher, library professional, and amateur photographer. Robert Lee identifies as a Christian writer. He recently launched his latest compilation of poems called City Remembrances. He will talk to us about this later on. But first we chat about the man many consider to be the father of the arts, Harry Simmons, honored this year in the Independence Day Awards. He received the St. Lucia Cross posthumously for distinguished service and contribution to culture and the arts. Here is that conversation with John Robert Lee. First, I'm Harold Simmons, who we regard as the father of modern arts and culture in St. Lucia. He's mentored, he mentored Derek Walker and Dunson St. Thomas. In Derek's book, Another Life in 1972, he actually has long chapters about Harold and Dunstan mm. and the early years together. He met with people like Charles Cadet. He discovered Cesar Descartes. If you study the life of Harold Simmons, and the FRC is now about to publish a biography of Harold Simmons, he was one of the first St. Lucians, really, in the modern times. He lived between 1940 and 1966. He died in the 40s. He started or led an arts and crafts movement. Walcott and St. have said, he taught them to look at St. Lucia and paint what you see. Don't just paint as many artists did in those days, what the Europeans did. Paint your landscape, paint your people. He was an, an arts and culture person, involved in the culture of the people, the music of the people, the dance of the people. Some of his articles on St. Lucia, St. Lucia folk culture, superstitions, dances, dresses, are still heavily used by researchers, local and overseas, at FRC Library. What would have inspired him, though? Did he inspired Very Derek good point. Him? Very good point. I really don't know. It may be from time to time, you have certain geniuses who arise and in a sense they jump over everything, even any possibility of people inspiring them. And they say, well, the way the Europeans did their work, or the Americans, they looked at the landscape and looked at what they had, their own fairy tales and they made music with it. Why shouldn't we do that? Why are we imitating them? In a sense, that kind of thinking is probably what propelled them without having any models here. Before Harold Simmons, there might have been teacher Alex and Warwick Walker, Derek's father, and they had their own little arts groups. But they did Shakespeare, they did local things. But Harold Simmons was able to jump over all of that and say, no, it's our thing. Of course, he was very much ostracized by the society of the day. He came out of the Simmons family, a middle class family. But all the stories I hear, I never knew the man personally. I saw him once or twice around as a young boy. Ostracized by his family in the society of the day. He probably died in despair and tragically in poverty up in Gara, okay, where he took his own life. Um, he, for he had a job at The Voice one time. He wrote an article about BB or something, and the, the people who owned The Voice, the Garnet Gardens, fired him. They didn't like what he said. He was very much an ostracized figure, a radical, as um, Vladimir Lucian said in his lecture the other night, Independence Lecture. He was one of those delinqu delinquents, people called delinquent. But out of them came Charles Cadet, Derek Walker, Dunstan Thomas, Sesson, Eric Brandford, Spass and Helen, who had, and today, as we come back to the honors, to the award, he receives posthumously St. Lucia Cross. Well deserved. Of course, we have his, his student, Derek Walker, getting the first, one of the first local knighthoods, KCSL, Knight, Knight Commander of St. Lucia, along with Von Lewis, who's very interested in the arts. He's more of a political scientist and politician and so on, an intellectual through Yui. And of course, Lawrence Laurent, an actress who I acted with in my youth many years ago. Mm -hmm. And she's been involved with UNESCO and of course education. Then throughout the awards and picking out just the arts and culture ones, Adrian Ogier, of course, a poet and well known for all his work in the arts and culture, Jati for Calypso, Monty Maxwell for music, who else was in the arts there again, arts and culture, Taj Weeks, mm -hmm. for his community work, but Taj is known as a musician. Course, yes. mm -hmm. So the arts and culture, in case I missed anybody, I mm -hmm. apologize. But those were the ones that stood out to us in terms of the arts and culture focus. Congratulations to all the other awardees, Dr. Dr. Bird, um, Dr. Richardson, mm -hmm. the policemen, the firemen, and so on. People who, this is very significant this year, I thought. Attention was paid to people who had done works of bravery. Mm -hmm. There were at least four people, a young brother and sister who saved some people from a fire. That man <laughs> um, who went into the manhole, mm -hmm. spent two hours there, thank God he's alive to rescue a woman, and somebody else again. So it was interesting to see um, that people who do such um, works of bravery 
are, are honored publicly by the, our good friend Earl Buski for That's journalism, right. our, our field. Yes. Um, was also honored. Mm -hmm. um, Poyard, mm -hmm. again, trade unionist with a close relationship with Focus Center. So many of these people are connected with Focus Center. Sito edited a book on George Charles many years ago, a biography of George Charles. So for people like Sito and Ulbuski, for us at FRC, a lot of these honors were timely and we welcome them. They recognize people who are working in the arts and culture and even further afield, connected areas, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was um, sort of my own response to that. Mm -hmm. This is Calabash Community. We will return with our guest, Robert Lee, shortly.